Right people, welcome back to a new video. Hope everyone is doing all right. Today, um, I want to go topping. Tractor's out there on the topper. Craig pointed out before I go topping that uh, we've got a new power shaft guard for it. Uh, and I probably ought to put it on first, so very good idea, very well pointed out. This is the current power shaft guard. You can see it's all let go of there. It's all mangled and rubbish. I don't even know what's happened to that there, look. It's all knackered. Hopefully, this one, it's a different, Different make, I think, but it is a direct replacement. So, first job is going to be to strip that one down and see if we can get this one on. Now, this is a really great power shaft. It's got a um, it's a wide angle one, so you can have it whilst you're turning. And this end that goes onto the machine, uh, so that's the tractor end. Um, it's got like a bracket and two bolts. There's no like um, button, big slip clutch in there. So that isn't very easy to get off, but. We'll take this apart and see how we get on. First thing I've done is I've split the shaft, so I've taken the small end out of the big bit and I've taken the cover off the end. So this bit that is absolutely mangled, these have a couple of little white clips, so you just stick a screwdriver in, pry open, and they clip into what a PTO ring, which is so normally that PTO ring sits over there in that groove, and then the white bits clip into it, but this is all um, become disfigured, it must have got hot and melted or something. In bits there that have come out, look, so that's not sitting in there nicely, which is probably why that happened to that bit. So, yeah, hopefully, there's a new one of those in the pack with the new one. This big guard here seems to be screwdriver on, so we'll get to taking all those uh, screws out in a minute. A great little top tip if you're ever taking out lots of these little screws or something like that, like I am now, get yourself a little empty pot. Put them in, that way you can't lose them. And also I've got myself some assistance. All right. All right, old one. This always works better if you've got a battery. Empty. Right, let's try this again with some grease. Same as before, this ring needs to go on this shaft here. Um, now, what way did he go? I'm fighting with this thing, I'm trying to get this hood over this plate or this like big ring, which ends up screwing into this bit. But that is tight. But once that's over, that should just slide on, and it'll be right. Ah, oh, not there yet. Premature celebrations. Right, now we're there. Right, I think I'm finally now at a point where I'm ready to put the first half of this shaft back together. So, this little bugger here has been giving me an absolute headache. Got to go in that gap, and this thing is only just flexible enough to get over that ring inside where that grease nipple is. So I've got it, I think where I want it now, to the point where these little holes line up with the little holes inside. So I just gotta put those screws back in. So that is the next job, we'll get it back on the bench, put the screws in. Right, now hopefully that was the hard part done. So that's the wide angle bit that goes on the back of the tractor. Um, now we've got to do this part. This one should hopefully be a bit easier because it's just uh, the other one of these, which I left in a very safe place over here. So hopefully it'll be easier. It's 
snap. He's on. Yeah, hey, woo! That's all it wanted, a bit of lubrication. Right, we're not done yet. Got the shaft back over here with the topper now. I've got to get um, this end on here, which is a tricky one. <coughs> held on by this bracket, there's two of them there together, one goes on top of the other, two 22mm bolt, so that one goes on there and gets clamped on, and then the other end, I had to swap the other power shaft around, so the 1000 speed one's on, that can go down, um, and yeah, we've got to get all this on here now. Finally got away to do some topping, took me an absolute age to get the power shaft back on, I actually had to get Craig to put the end on the topper, um, it has like this little clamp that holds it onto the shaft and I couldn't get it done up for the life of me and it's one of those things, as soon as someone else had a look at it, it went straight on. So we're in a field here, got a couple of bulls living here at the minute but see how many thistles and bits of rubbish there are, just going to tidy them up quick. But yeah, there it is, new shaft all on, nicely protected, good job done that, I can flip that one down. Quite happy with that. I haven't plugged the lights in because there's a problem with this cable that blows a fuse in the back of the tractor if you plug it in. So we need to sort that out, but as we're not going on the road, it doesn't matter. Okay, tell it what field we're in. And now it'll record our works. Hopefully we should be topping some grass. That one in flow. Follow the ground nicely then. Here we go. Right through the middle. It's up nearly level with the bonnet. It just absolutely obliterates it. I shall go over it all twice, the thistle bits, just because um, it will push some of it over. but. Doing a smashing job. Oh yes. Lovely job. Now I know everyone's gonna say I'm spreading thistle seeds, which I probably am, but it's just so untidy. I need to knock him down. Get out of the way, boy. So you think nearly got run over? Look at the difference. So I'm going to carry on for 20 minutes or so, and then we'll do a bit more tomorrow. I got to be out. Somewhere tonight for tea with Abby. If I'm late, I will be in the doghouse. So yeah, I'll do a little bit and then we'll uh, we'll pick it up tomorrow. Right, guys, welcome back. Day two of topping. It's uh, it's rained loads overnight. We actually have puddles on the ground. I've not seen those in a very long time, which is good. Um, I'm going to go and finish off the field that I started yesterday after coffee. Uh, I just saw Rex whilst I was out checking stock. And he quite like this field here. Topped it is absolutely full of rushes. So move this feeder because that will not be a good day. There is the tractor and the topper. It was an SR15, this topper. I don't know what that means. The uh, McConnell Batwing. It was a very, very nice job. So yeah, that's... Uh, See how we get on here. My new mount has come as well for the tractor, which is good, so you can go on the windscreen. There somewhere. Thanks to everyone for the suggestions. I um I panicked because I was going away, I wanted one quickly, so I just ordered the same one I had before off Amazon, but 
I do need to look into getting a new magnet because mine's broken. So we'll look at getting a better one of these as well. Now the rushes in this field are particularly bad. I don't know if it's ever been topped before or, um, or why it is so bad, but if you look forward, you see where we just made an AB line strip there. I'll probably miss a bit of it because I did the AB line up there. But what it turns that into, absolutely mullism. And what I'll do is I'll do them this way and then I'll turn around and do them the other way so anything that's been pushed over and not topped properly will get done again the other way. Look at this in here. And you can't tell me that's not satisfying to watch. Hey, look at them. I've got to do steering. I do love a good bit of topping. There, that looks a bit different, doesn't it? These things probably want a bit of a touch up with the grinder, but they're still whacking stuff down. Got a bit of cord in there that needs to come out as well. Might have to come and feed those cows because they're not very happy down there, but. What an improvement this is. I mean, some of it has been pushed over. So like there, you can see it probably would have benefited from coming the other way at it again, but it has done a hell of a job on 90% of it. Uh, I've got some big bundles of stuff like that that have all bundled up, but they'll rot down. Makes the field look massive. And you can see underneath all these rushes that just top out the way, there's actually loads of clover. Hopefully the few sheep that are up hiding behind the trees be quite happy. Well done, machine. So I've got possibly the narrowest gate on the farm to try and get out of here. We'll uh, see how we get on. Right, so my plan after coffee was to go and um, do the bit I started yesterday. Rex is down at the sheep hand and doing some vaccinating, so I'd have to upset all of his gates and everything to get through. So I've just moved our cold cows out of the field I'm in, the one next door from one of the river meadows. I'm just taking the opportunity to um, top where they've been, get rid of any of the docks they've left behind and all the big stemmy bits of grass. One thing I was thinking about whilst I was putting this PTO guard on yesterday, and it's probably quite controversial to say, but I think they are hideously expensive for what they are. Now that guard I put on the topper yesterday it was 170 pounds which I don't know someone will tell you that's cheap someone will tell you it's expensive but obviously there's two ways of looking at it it's expensive for what it is it's essentially a plastic tube uh, with a couple of PTO rings on it so that way it looks expensive what makes it look really cheap is the fact that it will save your arm or potentially your life if you were to go anywhere near that um, machine whilst it was running now the other thing that annoys me slightly, especially with used machinery, if you go to a yard or a dealer or somebody and buy a used machine, I think they ought to have to, by law, put a brand new PTO guard on if there is anything wrong with one that they've got in stock, which I know they won't like me saying. But the amount of bits of kit you see in magazines and online that sale that are missing guards. It's pretty shocking I think. With um, you know, farmers are renowned for being tight with their money. Normally anywhere that they can save a quid, they will, but obviously a power shaft guard is not the place to be saving a quid. But I don't know, let, let, let me know your thoughts because one of those things, we've got so many machines that have power shafts and that have guards on, and we, well, not me personally, but I put this one on yesterday, but we've, we've, put, we've changed a lot of power shaft guards probably in the last 12, 18 months. You look at what you spend on them, they're not cheap. 
but obviously they're there for a very good reason. So I don't know. What do people think? It's quite a controversial subject, I'm well aware. So there's not much really here that needs topping. You can see there's a few stemmy bits of docks and stuff. It's making a nice job of it. I just have it set to the very bottom of the chain on the front of the top of there is just flicking the ground. Don't really want to be cutting any of the actual grasses down, I just want to be taking off all the stemmy bits. Got the AB line working there, which is good. Save me having to do straight lines by eye. We'll soon knock this piece out. And then we'll see, we'll either after dinner go down and do the bit I wanted to do earlier where Rex is, or um, I might go in the workshop and have a tidy up because it is an absolute bomb site in there at the moment. Don't you just love it when you finish perfectly? That. What a job. Can't beat it. I do find topping so satisfying. I know it's, a lot of it is just aesthetically pleasing, but um, we're doing some good as well. So that is me now done. I get the end of this one. You just told me. Just swing around and get a little bit in the corner here. And we'll head back up to the farm. I missed one tiny dock plant, which is really annoying. So we will go and deal with that the old fashioned way. There you are. There's a buzzard or a sparrowhawk or something down there squealing. Right, you can see the job we've done here. So we've just taken all the tops off these stemmy bits that are all dead and um, not actually growing. See there's some nice bits of grass in underneath. It's green, now we've had some rain. That'll actually green up really well. Hopefully come back through. See the rain's actually got down to the soil as well. It's moist down there, which is good. We can still do with some more though. Um, this thing was squealing a bit. I don't know if you heard it at the end of that last clip. I'm just gonna have a feel round, feel if anything feels really hot, see if there's any bearings that might have gone anywhere. There's definitely some electric fence wire caught up in that rotor, so we'll have to get that out. Um, the one underneath, I don't want to go and, I don't want to look at the middle rotor or get underneath without having it blocked up, because you never know what might happen. This one's got some electric wire around it as well. New guard's doing its job very nicely. Nothing wrong with that at all. So I greased up the entire power shaft yesterday, so there shouldn't be anything wrong with that. Um, I don't think there is anything wrong. I never actually checked the oil level, but obviously it'll be hot now, so we'll have to wait till next time, or later on when it's cooled down. I'll put the strap on a minute, because um, I might not use this for the rest of today. All these gearboxes feel warm, but they will do, because they're doing a lot of turning. I don't know if you can move this cover. It'd be handy to get in there and grease all that up. But, uh, it also needs a wash, so we might wash it this afternoon or something. Covered in all this rubbish. Get the leaf blower on it. Right, so cut all that out. It wouldn't have been doing any harm where it was. Um, it wasn't on a bit that goes into a bearing or anything, but just good practice to get it all out. We'll take that back up and put it in the bin. That's going to be me done for topping today, so thank you guys for watching the video. As always, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up uh, and subscribe to the channel. We're still ahead of Crawford on our race to 10,000 subs. If you didn't know, we're in a sub race initiated by Crawford from Crawford's Farm um, to get to 10,000 subs. Whoever gets there first gets to put an advert for their channel in the Losers channel. Um, so yeah, we're, we're nearly at 9,000, so that's um, it's going well. Thank you very much to everyone who's subscribed recently. If you want to see any more of what goes on here at Northwick, there are links in the description to all my other social medias that I post on daily. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video very soon. Cheerio.